Hi everyone, welcome in. This is Marlene with the Room to Bloom. Thanks for joining me today. So I um, made some cards a while ago as a gift for someone and they were here. Um, so I they've just been kind of sitting here. Um, there are a variety of cards and I thought, you know, I would pull them out today and use them and see what messages want to come forth today. It's a little bit tough to shuffle, so I'm going to maybe just kind of set these on the table and uh, do this a little bit and we'll see what messages come forth for the collective here today to show us the message that would be helpful. So the first one, it says, I am valued. Um, and so I want you to think about if you are feeling a lack of value in what, what or whom makes you feel valued. And I also want to say that what makes you feel valuable from the inside out? So there are people that might say, oh, you do this great, or you know, you're great at this or that, or whatever, right? Positive affirmations from the outside. But what about, what can we pull from our inside where we know that we hold value through maybe integrity, kindness, love, being helpful, um, and where there may be others on the outside who aren't seeing that, sensing it, maybe they have a lot of chaos going on in their life. So it's almost as if they can't see the forest through the trees because there's too much going on for them. But it's about reaching deep inside and remember that I am valued and um, that you are here for a reason and that you have gifts, skills, and abilities that are yours and yours alone. So kind of looking into those, if you are not feeling valued, you are, and just remember that. It's the smallest gestures that can make the biggest difference to others. It's the kind words, the, the smile, right? That can lift someone and brighten someone's day. Okay, so I was shuffling this. The next one is I am truthful. Okay, so um, now there may be times in your life where you, where you have um, not been truthful. And so by affirming that I am truthful, this is meaning that you're choosing a new way. It is saying I am truthful from this moment on, in each moment, each step I take, I am truthful with myself with others. I honor my journey. I honor the journey that others are having. It doesn't mean that I have to get completely caught up in their journey. I just honor where they're at, knowing that we are all on different areas of this path back home of Ascension, right? Um, so again, if you have not told the truth and you're beating, up your, beating yourself up about it, just remember that you know, consciously choosing to slow your thoughts down and um, be truthful in what it is that you say and what it is that you tell yourself, okay? And how it makes you feel also to be truthful. Because um, if you are carrying around a lot of lies, you know, there's a lot of burden that goes with that. I, you know, um, there's a lot of burden, you know, it's someone said this saying to me once and it was really profound. Um, and it was lies don't have legs. They don't get up and walk away. They stay with you until you move through them, process them, clear them out, make them uh, do the best you can to make them right, you know, so keeping that in mind. All right, well, the one that's on the top, because these are kind of tough to shuffle, is I am safe, all right? So in what area of your life may you not be feeling safe, okay? It could be that you aren't feeling financially safe, that you aren't feeling safe when you say walk in a parking lot at night, or you don't feel safe if you are around someone who you know, say owns a firearm or you don't feel safe um, in crowded spaces, different things like that. 
I, I know people who don't feel safe at like the doctor's office, right? Because they aren't comfortable there or at the dentist, you know, things like this. Um, but I will tell you, especially in the experiences that I have had, which I think I just kind of mentioned this in one of my videos, for a couple of years I was very, um, I was really moving through a fearful place because I was experiencing so much and finally, like I was doing this, it's like, you know what, this is so, so ridiculous. I had to pull my power back and my strength back into me and say, you know what, I am safe. I am here. I have all my faculties. I am safe. Um, and I finally had to realize that I was seeing all of these things and experiencing all of this stuff, but it was not harming me, right? So always remember that, that, you're, it, that you are safe, that it's your mind that can get away from you and your thoughts can create re your reality. So being careful to lean into, I am safe. I am safe. No matter what I do, where I go, who I'm with, I am safe. And maybe, maybe something can feel overwhelming, but if you just keep pulling, pu putting those words in, I'm safe. Everything is fine. I am safe. All is working out for the highest and best. I trust my journey. I trust God. This is great. I am valued. I am truthful and I am safe. Okay. So the next, um, from a book and this book is only love today by rachel macy stafford and it's really beautiful it says new habits when love speaks we are all better heard when love looks we are all better seen and it is titled if it's love if it's love those tears are a sign of distress not an act of defiance if it's love her bold fashion statement is something to be celebrated not criticized if it's love, his mistakes are evidence of trying and learning, not simply messes to clean up. If it's love, her slow p pace is a reflection of her stop and smell the roses approach to life, not a time waster. If it's love, his early morning wake-ups are something he'll outgrow, not a plot to exhaust us all. If it's love, her poor choice is a chance to respond thoughtfully, not give a knee-jerk reaction. If it's love, our voice has a little more calm, our eyes have a little more perspective, our hands have a little more gentleness. We won't always choose love. We are human after all. But when we choose love over anger, hurry, condemnation, shame, sar and sarcasm, there is a space for goodness to enter the conversation. When love speaks, we are all heard, better heard. When love looks, we are all better seen. Let us look and speak love today. As much as we possibly can, let us allow goodness in. Today's reminder with that is, in the busyness of life, it is easy to fall into the habit of saying my loved one's name as if it is just a word or a way to get his or her attention. Before I address my loved one today, I will take a moment to remember the time, thought, and care that went into choosing the name of this precious person, and then I'll say it with genuine love. This one simple action holds the power to bring love into the conversation. And um, I will tell you that I was um, a mom who was over... I, I spread myself way too thin. I was doing way too much. And I cut a lot of um, this stuff short. And every time, because I was always trying to do too much, I could not keep up in my own life and, and feel um, like I was doing everything great. It was, it was just like I was just hanging on by a thread that felt like so many times. Um, and yet I was still trying to hold it up, trying to hold it up, trying to hold it up. But through all of that, I would be short. I would be, um, you know, like pushing my kids, hurry up, we've got to go, you know, and it wasn't, you know, there were times in their life where they didn't really get to slow down and smell the roses because of that. I mean, it wasn't always like that, but there were enough times 
where I carried a lot of guilt, shame, regret um, for having a life like that because I was trying to have, um, to for us to, you know, I want to say have it all, but I don't, you know, to have a, a nice, comfortable life where we could enjoy things and, and um, maybe enjoy some of the things that I didn't get to enjoy as a kid that I wanted to share with my kids or things that I did get to enjoy as a kid that I wanted them to have the experience of. So um, we all do this, but when we do choose to slow down, we can really like observe ourselves. And even then, I think I was observing myself. That's why I, I would be, I would carry that. I would feel really bad about it. Um, but right now, let's just keep leaning into the love. And this includes loving yourself, even when you didn't handle a situation like you may have liked to have handled it. Um, again, we can choose again in every single moment. And it's like you, once you recognize that you didn't like your own behavior, the next time you're going to learn from that, you're going to say, I'm going to start to slow things down. I might tr try to take some things out of the schedule so that this doesn't get so chaotic anymore, so that we can really... Um, build these relationships on a solid ground, right? Okay, and then we're gonna take um, some cards here. Let's actually start with the Cordelia Francesca Brobs Oracle of the Unicorn. So let's see what comes out with these messages. What would you like to show us here today? Ask that these cards be blessed, the highest and best. Help us choose cards that are for the highest and best for all. Show us messages that will be helpful for those who have tuned in for the collective. All right. Okay, the first one I have is intention. Be clear and decisive. Focus on what you really want. Be bold with your requests to the universe. Um unicorn is in a, a wave of water but it's almost like a wave of wings so it's a very interesting card setting your intentions and taking action or action steps daily to achieve what it is that you would like to do right so um, we can set an intention and we can go sit on the couch now, if we can get our vibration into the actual feeling of it, we can magnetize that to ourselves. But when we are also taking action steps, it is telling the universe, hey, I really want this. I'm very interested in this. I really want to pursue this. And so because I'm taking the action steps, I do something and then the universe responds. I do something and the universe responds. So it's like a dance with the universe. Um, and so remember that taking the action steps are really important. Okay. The next one is support. Ask for help, get more rest and nurture yourself. Here's the scale. I pulled this the last time I used this deck and she is, she's just kind of resting there on the back of this, this, um, Pegasus and it's okay to ask for support where you need it okay and um, take the time for the rest you need honor what your body is telling you if your body says no don't keep saying yes to every invite to um, every chore to every single thing that is on this to-do list that seems to never get smaller actually you really honor yourself in the divine when you start to pull back and you say balance I'm going to find balance in my life so that I reclaim my peace my center and through this balance I feel very well rested and taken care of and nurtured by the universe and you can ask your angels and guides for help to help you 
get clarity on what it is that you might be able to let go or to thin out of your life so that things start to balance out. Okay, the next one we have is anger. Safely express your anger. Use anger as a positive force. Honor all of your emotions as sacred. So this is a black horse with like light under it. So it's kind of all lit up and it's actually a unicorn. So there's some things going on that um, someone like you're stuffing anger, right? And so even if like there was a situation that maybe involved one person, a couple people, multiple people, whatever that is. And if you don't feel ready to um, say, say it's one and you're, you're not ready to face them or you don't know how you're going to say what you feel like you need to say, you might practice writing it. Um, so that you can get your words out. Um, also, you may end up just literally writing it so that you do get all of your words out the way that you feel like you need to. Um, anger is an emotion that does have to be expressed, but you also don't want to keep playing tennis with it, right? Um, where it's like, now you're angry. You, It's like a an angry tennis ball, right? And you whack that over there and now they're angry and then they whack it back and it creates more and then you just back and forth, back and forth. Um, you you know, you could start out with a letter stating, um, first of all, I wanna let you know that, that I'm writing this so that I can clearly say what I need to say. And I am angry because, but I do not want to play a tennis match. Um, about this. I just really need to say this and move through it and process it. It doesn't mean that you can't respond, but I will not get involved in a match, right? Um, so express your anger the way that you can safely for you. You can use anger as a positive force. So um, in the example of uh, mothers against drunk drivers, right? There, there is probably a lot of really angry mothers, right? But what are they doing for a positive force? They're out there bringing awareness to people so that they aren't drinking and driving, right? Using your anger as a positive force to help others so that things aren't happening more or to other people, okay? Or animals or whatever that is, right? and honor all of your emotions. So if you need to sit on the couch or you need to go outside and yell and let stuff pour through you, um, getting it out will be very clearing for you. Um, and then take some rest after you get that out. Don't just jump right back into life because you will feel cheated. It's like going on a vacation for, uh, two weeks and you really got in vacation mode and your flight arrives at 5 a.m. in the morning home and you have to work at 7. That's what it's like. So you just really need some time to readjust that, okay, I've let that go and then kind of move through that and then recalibrate to this new you having released the anger. Okay, I'm going to take one more of these. Goddess. Honor your divine feminine energy. See your inner beauty. Love every part of you. So with this coming up with that valued card, um, you know, you might be being really hard on yourself and not seeing your own inner beauty um, because with this thing about I am valued, um, we all have an amazing beauty about us. It's just that you know, even like say someone is coming around and they're very mad and they're very whatever. There's something intrinsic about them that it's like they have a story that's been weaved, right? And you might not know all of that story, but they got to this angry part somehow. And it's the story of how they were when they arrived you know, as a baby and went through these things or experiences in their life um, that maybe made them not feel so beautiful anymore as a human being, as a person. Um, and so 
when someone can kind of see beyond someone's surface pain, that could be very touching to someone who is really struggling. So I challenge you to do that, to look beyond when someone is at face value, stressed out, angry, whatever that is. If you can slow down, look deeper, maybe not make assumptions, right? Not make judgments. Um, maybe ask a question or two, but maybe not too many questions, right? So just kind of looking, like feeling that and, and seeing. Sometimes all people need is just someone to sit there, just simply to be there. And they don't need words. They don't need advice. They don't need pressure. They just need to know that somebody cares enough to simply be. Okay. All right. The next one that I would like to use is the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle deck. This is by Colette Baron reed All right. Please show us, Spirit, what you'd like for us to know. What messages would you like to show the collective today that would be helpful in this reading? Okay, the first one is the Earth Fairy. Physical health, grounding, and foundations. And this kind of, um, you know, I am truthful. I am safe. I am valued. Absolutely about like kind of the Earth, um, our earthing situation. So something could be going on with your physical health. The number on this is the number 27. Let me hold this up, by the way. The colors on it are kind of an earthy taupe tone and I'm just going to read this one from the book it says the earth fairy says to pay attention to your health and all things pertaining to your physical body perhaps you need exercise or to pay special attention to your diet are you getting enough sleep the earth fairy reminds you to indulge your senses it's good to revel in the sensations of your body the sensual world is an important part of the path to Avalon and must be honored when the Earth Fairy appears, she reminds you to get into your body and out of your head. Don't spend so much time analyzing things over and over. Get your hands into some dirt, gardening perhaps. Walk barefooted in the grass and remember that your physical self is the house of your spirit as the Mother Earth houses you. Get grounded. Remember that you are part of the living Earth and stay connected. Another message from the Earth Fairy is to make sure that the foundations of all you do are solid. Be aware that projects, relationships, business ideas, and family all need to be built on sturdy, steady foundations. The Earth Fairy always helps you when you ask. So if you are um, that mom or parent who's feeling overwhelmed um, and you really need to get grounded because you just are kind of up here and you're grasping at straws or you're juggling and your hands are up here, but you need to get grounded, ask for help and guidance. Just sit quietly. You can think this, you can be outside and you can ask out loud. Our thoughts carry a vibration. Our, um, the words we speak carry a vibration. And when you ask for help and signs that would be helpful for you to ground, Say, please make it so clear that I cannot miss the signs to get grounded. Please show me the way to my perfect, optimal physical health. Show me what I can handle in this moment, in my schedule, in my life. Show me the way. All right. And the next one we have, I'm going to take another one here. <clears throat> High Priestess, discernment, precedence, prophecy, and vision. This is the number two. So this is about a very strong intuition, which is going on. Um, so using your discernment at this time. So I just did a short video on what is discernment. 
situation. Sight, higher knowledge, receptivity, and the ability to work with subtle energies of spirit and the psychic power of the feminine. These are aspects of the High Priestess of Avalon. When the High Priestess appears before you, she asks you to trust your intuition and to throw the net of your awareness into the world around you, pulling in truths that may defy your intellect, rational mind, or what others wish to falsely or superficially portray. Go beyond the ordinary, past the chaos of modern life, and trust your inner vision to guide you on your path. Pay attention to your dreams and keep track of your intuitive hunches. For when the High Priestess appears, she asks you to look for the thread of truth in these places. Be discerning in all that you do at this time. For the High Priestess reminds you that not all is as it seems to be. However, don't take this world personally. Rise above it and ask for a true vision to see the path ahead. You will be given this vision. All you need to do is to ask the God or Goddess and be open to receiving it. The High Priestess reminds you of the feminine principle of receptivity, gathering power by receiving information and waiting for others to act first. Allow the world to show you its intentions. The Goddess blesses and protects you with the High Priestess of Avalon when the High Priestess of Avalon appears on your path. Okay, and so that's like a very powerful card. <clears throat> and it's kind of, you know, when you look at like this grounding, it's like that's what the High Priestess is doing, is she's like holding her own observing what's going on, using her discernment to make decisions and choices, not just running around flighty, um, you know, or say willy-nilly, right? Running around, it's just um, watching what is going on and trust your path. And, and this thing about not all is as it seems. So continue to it's like moving slowly. Imagine that there's a bit of a fog, right? And you know that the answers are there. And now you're tapping into these answers because you're rising above the fog and you're seeing the clear path. All right, what else would you like to show us here? These cards are getting into the vortex by Esther and Jerry Hicks. Okay, the first card is, our opinions about our children can influence their behavior. The more you see things in your child that you do not want to see, the more of that you will see. And so the behavior that you elicit from your child is more about you than it is about your child. This is actually true for all of your relationships. But since you think about your child more than you do of most others, your opinion about your child plays a greater role in its behavior. And um, as a parent, this number here on this card is 49. It's really, really helpful, hopeful, and healing to speak words of beauty, to speak words of encouragement, inspiration over your child, to see when they are in their greatest joy and to recognize that and let them know that you see that so that they feel that more right and they they already are it tell them that you see that it helps them shine their light even more so even you know as parents you know we've all been pushed right by our kids in various ways and there might be this you know, these situations where we've been frustrated, right? I have absolutely, absolutely, absolutely been in that position. And this was actually my greatest lesson as a parent. Um, not knowing that my children came to me and all of our children came to us. One, because God entrusted us to 
help raise them, but two, that they come to us as teachers to help us learn about ourselves. So um, absolutely honoring them as being the teacher that they are to teach us things and teach us about ourselves to learn. And um, I have learned a lot, I will say that. <laughs> okay, so, and I, it is with gratitude too. I, I thank my kids for that. Okay, and the next card that I have is, I can attract relationships that agree with my desires. So these cards are very fun and interesting. It says, people are not finding it difficult to find the mate of their dreams because that person is not out there, but because of their own contradiction to their own desire and the thoughts they offer about the subject every day. When you consistently offer thoughts about your future relationship that feel good while you think of them, that means you are consistently matching the desires that you have discovered as you have lived life. And under those conditions, only someone in agreement with your desires could come to you. So um, this can be really helpful for you to, it's, it's like writing a list of qualities that you want to have in the person and in yourself, in yourself. So you have to have the qualities first to attract the qualities, right? So if you want someone who is honest, then be honest and you will attract honesty, right? If you want someone who is on time, be on time and you'll attract people who are on time, respectful. People who are respectful, be respectful. Be in that energy of respect, right? Um, and so asking yourself, what is the energy that you are putting out and are you wanting something that you are not living, right? Um, and so by being the energy that you want, you'll keep attracting it in. So really taking a look at that would probably be helpful on your journey. I think for this reading, I am going to wrap it up, but I do want to say thank you very much for joining me. And um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your likes, subscriptions, comments, um, and hitting that notification bell. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.